Hello, welcome or welcome back to this episode in my second hip joint series. My name is Alphonse and with every episode comes a post on Patreon. You will find a background story on every episode and it's also thanks to my amazing patrons to make this movement series possible, these amazing movement sequences. So enough for the introduction, let's get right into the lesson and for that please come to rest, rest, come to rest on your right side, make yourself comfortable on your right side and then we shall start. Okay, the floor, wonderful. So come to lie down on your right side, make yourself comfortable in side lying on your right side. And then place your left hand behind you at your back down to the left and the right hand to the right and in this way your shoulder girdle comes to lie square on the floor if you're super flexible. <clears throat> if you're not then maybe your knees will come up again you will roll back. So that's the a starting position and make yourself comfortable. Uh, use cushioning and towels where you need it. To not put strain on your lower back, so have the twist. Not so much in your lower back, but somewhere. <laughs> in your spine that you're lying on your right side and the left arm to the left and the right arm to the right on the floor. So that's our starting position, the resting position, the starting position and for the movement, the first movement. So please bring your attention to your left hand, your left hand on the floor to the left and think about, don't, don't make a big movement, just first think about sliding your left hand downwards towards your feet and maybe not as a movement as I said, just like a, a notion, uh, intention to, to lengthen your left arm, left arm downwards to see if your fingers could stretch, your finger berries could slide, your palm could slide a little bit on the floor, your elbow straighten, which is the direction you would choose, which is the direction of your hand that would appear, the trajectory. Do you have your palm towards your, the palm turned towards the ceiling or the palm to the floor? Where is the neutral? Where, where would your arm just how do you have to turn your arm so it's just relaxed? You don't have tension. The arm is just like a sausage, <laughs> a sausage on the floor resting and then you're pushing your shoulder downwards, your elbow downwards, your middle finger downwards, the tip of your shoulder downwards towards your, your feet, this, this direction. And start and stop and start and stop and take rests and see what kind of movement this becomes if you give yourself enough time. And then also do the same thing with your right hand. So bring your attention to your right hand, the right sausage <laughs> is lying on the floor and then push your right hand downwards and the wrist and your right elbow and the right shoulder and see how it, it is, how is it on this side, on the right side to push down the right hand to downwards. How do you lengthen your arm downwards?
And then, of course, we can, you can combine these movements to the left. So the left hand downwards. And then after a while it stops and then it's the right hand downwards. And so you can play left and right, up and down. Take rests, feel. Where do you push? Where do you pull? Where there's tension? Where can you give in, let go more? Where can you push more? Yes, make this an exploration. What comes with that? What else is moving? What else is turning, rolling, shifting, sliding, twisting, bending, <laughs> lengthening and shortening? What else is there on yourself that starts to in, be invited to this movement, to participate in this movement? Now, change the position of your right hand. Bring your right hand overhead as possible your right arm overhead on the floor. So the left arm is downwards, the right arm is upwards. And again, reach down with your left hand, left hand downwards, and then the right hand, the right hand upwards, of course, away from you, headwards, uh, up on the floor. The right hand lengthen the right arm up, and then the left arm down. So. This is different now. Still one after the other, but different directions. And maybe you already brought your attention to your head and noticed the movements of your head and the shoulder girdle and your back. And then change over the arms, your left arm up, the right arm down. Let's try this as well. So this time it's the left arm that, that you push upwards and then the right hand, the right arm that you push downwards. And then let's take a short break on the back. So allow yourself to go. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so this asymmetrical position on the back, is it? How do you feel now when you lie on your back? Is there an aftermath to this? <laughs> How can such a gentle, small exploration <laughs> create such a big difference. How is it even possible? Huh? Ah, always surprising these lessons. And you can feel the lower, maybe you can feel the lower part, your left hip joint is much closer to the floor than your right hip joint. Maybe there's a lot less tension in your left side. Now let's finish this first movement with it and come back onto your right side again. with your left hand behind you and your right hand to the right. So maybe this position became easier already. And then again, uh, reach down with your left hand and then reach down with your right hand and bring your attention to your head and see, does your, does your head roll or does it slide? Is your head rolling only to the left when you reach down with your left hand, but not to the right when you reach down with your right hand? Or is it even on both sides? Do you have a movement of your head to both sides? How is it? Mm. 
so let's uh, take out the sledgehammer, <laughs> do something bigger, interlace your hands and bring your hands behind your head if, if that works or somewhere close to your head. Ideally your head is resting in your hands and then as if your head would be a passenger, lift your head a little bit with your hands and move your elbows, your hands to the left and to the right or go to the left and back to where you came from and then to the right and back and move left and right and see ah, that's not only a movement in the shoulder girdle and it's not only a movement in the neck but it should be where it should be the movement comes up from the core from your pelvis uh, from the pelvis up your spine in a twist and in a side bending and actually it's your core muscles it's your lower back it's your almost your pelvis that is moving your head left and right so here we have the relevance for a hip joint lesson we want to explore the hip joints in relation to the legs and to the shoulder girdle and the neck and continue this movement and see it's the same movement as before but maybe already quite a bit different we are driven from the center and not so much from the shoulders and if you let go so let go of this place your left hand to the left and your right hand to the right and then again reach down with your left hand <laughs> and see what that movement has become now see sledgehammer like boom there's no escaping it's a big change a big movement suddenly or when you reach down with your right hand to the right <laughs> <laughs> you can wildly move left and right like a gigantic window wiper or come back to this very small, this very delicate movement quality from the beginning where you reach just a little with your left hand also elegantly, so longing with your fingers downwards. Let your breath, let your side open, your right side when you reach down to the left and let the left side and catch some air when you reach down with your right side downwards. Yes, okay. Did you understand this? Did you benefit from that? So please come to lie on your back. Ah. <laughs> and again, we feel how it is to lie on the back, but we reap. We have the knowledge now, the intellectual understanding of the movement as well as the movement and the feelings and the sensations it's all there so let's um, should we continue on the left side make this even stronger maybe why not do the left side first and then we'll do the same thing on the right side so the second part of this lesson please stand your feet and cross your right leg over your left leg closely so we want to make the hip joints disappear. We want to have a nice bundle, a nice package with the legs. So cross the knees, the right knee over the left one and then bring the knees towards the floor on your right side. So a couple of times. So the knees towards the floor on your right side, tilting the legs and then up again. And um, Yes, so if you do this a couple of times, the question is where do you place your left foot? So if you place your left foot very far to the left, or if you place your left foot very far to the right, how does this change the movement of tilting the legs? Where is the twist in your back, in your spine, depending on the placement of your foot and in the previous lesson we have been standing the legs so you should have a pretty good position for your left leg or for your left foot already how in terms of how close your foot is to your pelvis now it's a question of left and right how far to the left or to the right do you stand your foot so let's take a short break <laughs> so when you come back onto your back you will feel wow uh, the difference is getting bigger 
the more, the deeper we get into this lesson, the, the bigger the differences and the better the left side is connected at the same time, the more relaxed the left side is. So it's not only a question of co connection, but of letting go of unnecessary effort. So again, please stand your feet, cross over your right leg over the left, tilt your knees to the right, and then stay that. Stay there. That's our starting position. We will put everything together at once. Uh, move your left foot to the left and to the right on the floor while having your knees tilted to the right. So what kind of movement is that? The knees are tilted to the right. You are in this kind of twist. You move your left foot a little bit to the right and to the left. So the lower body might be a little bit lost there with this movement. So to the rescue, upper body to the rescue, interlace your hands like you had before, your hands behind your head, and let's combine these movements. The left foot to the left and right, and the head together with the hands left and right. So bend your head to the left and the foot, the left foot to the left, and then bend your head to the right, and the left foot to the right. And you see <laughs> upper body to the rescue like this. When you work with your whole body, everything connects and then this movement suddenly becomes a lot easier. And it's just a, it's just a great movement you could do in between or at the end of a workout session to uh, relax some of your leg muscles if, if you will but here we build up to this we build a understanding for this movement how everything connects all right <laughs> then untwist yourself and come to lie on your back oh, okay that's a different sensation again. Hmm. So we already did a lot in this session. We woke up the shoulder girdle, the connection of the shoulders with the neck, how the neck relates to the core, how we bring together the movements of the legs and the pelvis with the upper body and the core and the neck. So on the left side. Now we going to repeat all this on the right side, not just a repetition, but a fresh exploration. Let's see. First, please come to lie on your left side and see how it is to lie on your left side. And then place your right hand behind you and the left hand in front of you. So that might be already quite a bit better. Let's see, what do I need in terms of padding? And then this is our starting position. And slowly relax into, the, into this position. If there's any discomfort, see where you need more pillows, where you need more towels, where you have to bend more, extend yourself more. How can you make yourself comfortable? And then start to reach down little by little with your right hand again see the, just like a sausage the right arm on the floor where is where is the arm relaxed with the palm more to the ceiling or the palm more to the floor where do you feel there's less tension in the arm and then reach down and see what trajectory and <laughs> and now you already feel the head is rolling together with the movement of the right hand the head is dragged along or you can lift your head a little bit to allow more movement in the neck. The hand pulling the neck, but there's also a power from within, deep within you support yourself with your core. Now you can already feel the connection here on the second side, right from the start, because you know, you know it from the other side, you know where the power should come from. And so we just observe if it's really happening. And then with the left hand also reach down to the left and go from right to left.
as a variation, place your left hand overhead, extend your left arm overhead on the floor and reach upwards with your left hand and then downwards with the right hand. And see if you can establish this connection. Disco. <laughs> <laughs> Disco connection. Left, right, left, right. A little dance. or the left arm down and the right arm up, if you have not already done that. Or both hands down again right hand on the right side, left hand on the left side, well that's, that became a lot better, didn't it? <laughs> so now we already know what is better, what is, how, how should it be, what, what is the right direction, what do we mean by better? Because you could feel it. Not because I gave you a, a checklist, this is better and that the ease, the, the, how much it rolls, the, uh, you know it, you know it. <laughs> okay, and then <clears throat> interlace both hands, bring both hands behind your head, rest your head in your hands and like this, move your head to the left and to the right. And there we have it. Here it's very apparent how the core, your center, drives this movement of your shoulder girdle. <laughs> and one last time with the arms down, the left hand downwards to the left and the right hand downwards to the right and slowly just a little bit and relax on your back. <laughs> now that's an interesting way to lie on the floor, isn't it? A new contact to the floor. Uh, a new first contact to the floor. Then, as a last movement to bring everything together, stand your feet and cross your left leg over your right leg. Sink your legs, tilt your legs to the left. And move your right foot to the right and to the left. See how well or that goes or how difficult that is. Small movement. Maybe see how you can help with your arms. Or the ultimate form in this lesson with both hands interlaced, the hands behind your back and while you pull or drag your head to the right, you also pull or drag your right foot to the right or to the left, left and right.
And I suggest to do this less as an exercise, but more as an exploration. So do you pull with your left elbow or do you push with the right? Do you breathe? Can you relax your jaw? What is the role of your eyes? Do you lead the movement with your eyes or do your eyes just stare to the ceiling? Is your neck relaxed? Do you have your feet, your knees hanging to the side? Do you have to hold your legs tight or can you relax your legs? What are the just for example, just a couple of questions, for example, what, what are the, the mechanics, what are the sensations, what are your thoughts about this movement, where can you bring your attention, what can you let go, what can you have participate. And then for a last time, extend your legs. <laughs> Feel how you're lying now on the floor. As one, one person where everything is brought together. A person who has his or her things together or their things together. All right. And then all that is left to do is to roll over one side and to come up into standing and face the world in standing and see, see how it feels, see how it feels like. So please come up to standing. <laughs> yes. How do you feel? How is it? Just to stand and to feel how you're standing. Where are your hip joints? Where are your shoulders? Where do you place your head? Where does everything go by itself? And of course, these movements, you can repeat them in your mind in standing and you can see how they are useful to turn and to look over your shoulder. Or you can imagine how it is useful for walking this twist that comes from your core. The the power you have to your disposal without compromising anything because that's how you allow yourself to function and that's how we uh, build, have been built over millions of years I think if that's true and we just discover how to use it <laughs> what a strange concept we learn how to <laughs> move ourselves uh, where does this come from? <laughs> All right, so, so I hope you enjoyed this movement sequence as much as I enjoyed presenting it to you. Practice makes perfect. Enjoy your movements, stay safe, have fun <laughs> and see you in the next video.